Hey there, it's Dr. Dave here with another Alice tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to look at a dice poker game. Well, basically I'm going to focus on the on the underlying logic for the dice poker game. So this will involve looking at a number of functions that I've, I've developed that will check whether a particular five dice that we've rolled corresponds to a straight or three of a kind or, or various other results. So let me begin by playing. So here we see the five dice being rolled, randomly generated, and the result. So in this case, we don't have any particular interesting result coming up, so we'll try again. Uh, again, no result. Keep on going. Might take us a while here. Ah, here we go. So in this case, you notice we've got three threes, so we get three of a kind. Okay, so how does all this work? Well, let's start off by looking at how we represent the dice rolls. So we're going over to our My First World or my f first method and this loop here randomly generates those five dice rolls so we've got a loop going five times and for each each element in uh, for each time around the loop we set this dice array to randomly n generate a number between one and seven now because we've got integer only, effectively what happens we end up with an integer between 1 and 1 and 6 because this is always going to be rounded off. Okay, so let's <coughs> excuse me. Let's go to our world. We we'll go to properties, and here's our dice array here. So it's an array consisting of five numbers. Initially we set the values to equal one, but this will update it there. Next we actually display the results of the randomly generated dice rolls. So that's this function here, so we click on that. And to display it, what we have here is five 3D text objects. And we set each of these individually to the corresponding element in the dice array. So dice one, 3D text, gets set to the, the first element, which has index zero of the world dice array and we set it to showing because initially we, we have that information hidden and so forth going through dice 2, dice 3, dice 4 etc. Now to have it all lined up we use an array visualization uh, if we just click on showing for a moment that allows us to store those five 3D, 3D text elements in a nice lined up manner that's pretty much all we use it for that purpose so I'll put that uh, hidden again. So that's the initial showing of the results. So the next part is where we actually uh, display the result. And here we go through with a nested if statement and check various uh, possible results. So the first one here is whether it corresponds to a straight, i.e. five numbers in succession. So if that's the case, then we set the 3D uh, result text to this text straight. Uh, similarly if it's five of a kind we set the text to five of a kind and we do the same for four of a kind, a full house and three of a kind. And the order here is fairly important because what will happen is, is if for example we test a three of a kind up here first then it may be that we have a five of a kind but that won't be displayed because it will actually just implement this function first. To implement this check. So we're careful to make sure we check whether it's a five of a kind before we check whether it's a three of a kind. Okay. Now, I think I've already mentioned back here for our world, we've got the five dice rolls stored in this dice array. Now let's have a look at one of these particular this, these functions that, that do the testing. So let's have a look at is three of a kind. So here we have is three of a kind. It takes a parameter representing the dice array. Now we could have used instead this global variable inside of here, but it's much better programming practice to use a parameter. Now the basic, one of the reasons behind that is because then makes it easier for us to test this particular function. If we used a, a global variable, much more difficult to do unit testing. Okay, so let's have a quick look at this. So this is a boolean valued function, meaning it returns either true or false. And it uses another function to test 
what the maximum count of results is. So for example, if we had, we rolled three ones, a two and a five, then our maximum count would be three, corresponding to the three ones. And this test then would return true because the max count would be greater than or equal to three. Okay, so let's have a look at get max count. Now get max count uses a nested, nested loop. Okay, so we're getting into some fairly complicated code now. We again pass dice array as a parameter. We have two local variables representing the current count and the maximum count. So let's have a look at the logic behind this. The first loop loops through the possible results. So for any dice, any particular dice roll, we can have a result between one and six. So again, note here what we have not including. So up to the seven, but effectively we go from one to six. So for each possible dice result, we set the current result to zero, or current count to zero. And then we loop through the five dice and count the number of times this particular result, so initially it will be one through through to six, shows up in the dice. So for example, if we're looking at the number of ones, we'd go through count through the five dice, adding one each time we, we come up with a one as a dice result. Okay, a little bit complicated, but uh, perhaps have a, have a run through it and see how it works. Once we've gone through the five dice, we have a value for current count, and we check whether that is greater than maximum count. If it is, we reset the maximum count to current count. So effectively this gives us a way of keeping track of the maximum number of dice roll results we have. So it might be we have three ones, our maximum would then be three. And finally then here we return the maximum count. Okay. So let's quickly go through the other ones. Is four of a kind uses almost exactly the same logic, except we're now testing whether it's greater than or equal to four. Uh, same goes for is five of a kind, so not too much different there. Now, if we go to is full house, slightly trickier now. I'll quickly save that. So for full house, we want to check that firstly, it's a three of a kind. Okay, so we want three of one type of, of dice coming up, dice result coming up. And for the other one, the other result, we need to check that the minimum count is two. So how does that work? Well, effectively what we're doing is we're showing that we've got three of one dice and two of the other dice. Okay, two, two dice corresponding to another, another number. Now, it may well be that we have five dice, all of the same number. But that's fine, that works here as well. So if we have three of one dice, two of the of another, then we set full house to equal true, otherwise full house is set to false. And again, notice that full house is a Boolean valued variable, local variable, and we return that as our result here. Okay, so get min count. So I won't go through this in detail, I'll, I'll just give you a quick chance to look at the code here, but this will effectively count the minimum non-zero dice roll result count. So again, for example, if we had three twos, a one and a, and a six, the min count would be one. That would correspond to the number of ones or the number of sixes that come up. Okay, I think that's long enough for you to have a look at that bit of code. Now finally, is straight. What we do here is work out the difference between the maximum number of maximum rolled dice and the minimum rolled dice. So again, we've got a couple of functions there that do that. And test whether the, well really the important one here is the maximum count roll is equal to one. So that means we won't have any repetitions. Well, I've also put in the min count, but that's kind of redundant in this particular case and also checking that the difference between the max, maximum rolled dice and minimum rolled dice must equal 4. Okay, so again have a bit of a think about the logic of that, but uh, that all works out. Min roll, just quickly flash that up, and max roll will be very similar. 
Okay, better wrap this one up now. I hope that's useful. I know that's a lot of information covered, but uh, hopefully you'll have a chance to, to go back over it at your own pace and hope, hope uh, you get some use out of it. Okay, bye.